Okay, good morning. Can everyone hear me okay like this? If, if you can't at all, then just uh, say so as we go on. What I want to do is probably take about 10 or so minutes talking a bit about uh, introducing you to Aberdeenshire, if you don't know about it, a bit about the economy there, and to talk about uh, something we've done over the past couple of years, which introduced a, uh, a new policy approach called the Town Centre First Principle. Um, it is more exciting than it sounds, I trust you, uh, please, pr pr I promise you that in overall terms. Uh, what I hope you will hear from me is a very pragmatic and grounded approach, and that's what it's about really. Um, it's nothing, um, I say this with care because Audrey's been involved in all the work here, is in, the, in the audience here, um, it's nothing whizzy, uh, but it's a very elegant and coherent piece of work. It's actually pervading everything that we do in terms of our thinking. I'll try and unpack that a bit as we go on. But first off about Aberdeenshire. Um, up in the northeast of Scotland, um, a pretty decent place I would say. 260,000 people living there. I say it's a decent place, that's borne out by the population increase which has been, if I go through it, just check a few notes, um, it's been about sort of 9% over the uh, past uh, 10 years or so, which is uh, far higher compared to the national average. GVA growth again is about two and a half times that of the national average as well. Um, so it is, I term it as one of the diesel engines of the country of, uh, of plugging away and sort of continuing to pump out growth and activity across the board in that respect. Um, it's a very, I'd say, comfortable area. It's well known for the oil and gas industry that we have there, maybe less well known for the agriculture, tourism, life sciences and fishing industries that we also have there, which are equally important as well. Um, I'm not sure I'm going to say it's not necessarily that diverse in terms of the population community across the board, uh, but then we have some very uh, uh, significant pockets of diversity in some of our major towns, such as Peterhead, for example. It's a very welcoming and accommodating uh, and open community and area, all in all. They let me through the door, so I take that as a decent starting point in that respect as well. Um, so what we have there as an area is somewhere which is um, pretty well sorted, uh, pretty comfortable, doing okay in terms of employment, probably the second lowest unemployment rates in the whole of the country. Uh, economic growth is going okay, fine. Um, in terms of the population, there's 260,000 people spread out across 182 different <coughs> communities uh, and 12 major towns that are in there. And actually, it is more rural than Highland is as an area. And that's because we're a bit flatter, fewer mountains, and people can live everywhere, as we find. So there's houses dotted left, right, and centre um, all over the place as well. That creates challenges for us in terms of service delivery and service provision, um, but it creates some interesting challenges then in terms of how to have that cohesion in terms of identity uh, for the different communities as well. That rurality I'll, I'll come back to uh, in a bit more. Um, I'll talk a bit, I guess, from a council-centric point of view. And I'll start off by saying that, uh, again, I hope that we are quite humble about our place in Aberdeenshire. We are part of the fabric of the uh, Shire. I think we are well respected, trusted, all in all we do a pretty decent job. We do some daft things sometimes, like planting trees in the middle of football pitches when you're not supposed to. It wasn't our finest hour, I can tell you more about that at some point. Um, but all in all, people think we do okay in the grand scheme of things, and I'll say that you know, quite open and happily, and we're ready to be challenged on that one as we go. It is certainly a team effort, it is the culture of Aberdeenshire. Whilst we're there and we've got a core role to play, it's not all about the council. Uh, what you'll see as I talk through is we've got a very large engagement representation of community councils, community associations, uh, communities are just getting on with stuff, people in very, uh, I'd say, uh, informal and less organised ways just getting on and doing things in that shape or form. But we've got a role to play clearly, not uh, apologetic about that, but it's not all about us, if that makes sense in terms of the balance there. Um, so if you look at economy and look at place, we've got, uh, I'd say, the usual collection of all the things you'd expect a council to have. We have an economic strategy, we have a regional economic strategy, we have a city deal, um, which is producing and working, uh, pretty pleased with how that's going all in all. Um, we've got a very good working relationship with the private sector, uh, with a, a cross-sector board called Opportunity North East in place, which has got um, councils, FE, HE, uh, private sector from across different sectors all around there and saying how do we actually make the best in terms of the economy and the place uh, for Aberdeenshire in that respect as well. We've got an inward investment strategy, 
uh, from a council point of view, we've got a regeneration strategy that also includes practical stuff of spending £5 million on four key towns in the north of the Shire in terms of supporting regeneration. Um, we have an office strategy trying to work out where and how we get all of our staff to work, etc. etc. So if you get the picture, all the normal pieces going on in that respect, the things you would think we should be having in place as well. I'll talk a bit more later on as we go. We've got some very good working relationships with rural partnerships as well. We've got town teams in place which are community led in terms of making the best of their towns like Bankery and like uh, Huntley in that respect. Um, so a decent uh, portfolio of stuff going on. Um, and as ever within that, we've got this uh, sort of busy planning function. Uh, it feels as though we sometimes have more planning applications in the rest of the country coming in. Uh, if anybody wants some fun and entertainment, come and see how we get on with the new golf course application early next year. It's always going to be interesting, that one. Um, so that keeps us busy. Uh, and clearly we had a focus in terms of place and on towns as part of our planning activity, but we felt that wasn't enough. And so over the past couple of years, we've developed a new approach and introduced a new principle from a policy point of view called Town Centre First. And what that in simple terms means is that whenever a committee makes a decision, they have to, uh, I'll be clunky about it, I'll get whacked for this one, um, they have to actually go through and make an assessment in terms of advice going to the council to say here is the impact on the town centre, the same as doing a quality impact assessment for any and every decision they make at every committee. And we've got more committees than you can ever count on your hands and fingers and toes, and there's lots of them, because we're also, because we're a diverse area, as well as having our main policy committees to make decisions, we have six area committees to represent our local communities as well. Very important that they do all the planning work and a lot of local engagement there as well. But any decision any uh, politician makes in the council has got to have that assessment done. Not just that though, we're also using this town centre first principle to uh, influence, inform, nudge, cajole um, every member of staff to think about what's the impact on the town centre when you're going about in your day-to-day -day job or think about doing something or developing a new piece of work in practice. The way we've done that is that we have uh, got this principle embedded at a policy level of the committee. We have ambassadors in terms of staff across 40 services who are there to, again, support their colleagues to think about this. We have 12 ambassadors in terms of councillors so that when we are just doing our day-to-day -day life and our work, people are saying, what's the impact on our town centre going to be when we're doing this? Um, that's not rocket science in my book. You know, so taking an idea which is about let's think about everything that we make a decision on, think about the impact on the town centre, yeah, that's, that's there. It's how we do it, it's the cultural piece, is the fundamentally important one. And that's that pervasive approach we're trying to take here, which is about whenever anything moves or shifts or thinks, then actually it's about have you thought about town centre first. The stage we're at is we've got it um, uh, embedded in all of our decision making. We're starting to embed that in all of our policies across the board. And just this week, we started to nudge some of our other colleagues, such as Fire, Police and Health, and say, what's your position on this stuff as well? Uh, when, with a smile, they sort of raised their eyebrows, and we're not quite sure about that one yet. I'll come on to that, all in all. Um, and it's not a bureaucratic thing. As I said, this is a nudge and a prompt. I don't want to be really grounded in terms of what it actually has resulted in. To take an example of some of our work on regeneration, that means that when we have been thinking about where and how to spend our money, we have been you know, spending our cash within our town centres. So in Fraserburgh, we are probably two thirds of the way through a two and a half million pounds regeneration piece of work of asset-based uh, <coughs> development on a site called Salton Square and uh, doing up what was the old town uh, uh, house. Uh, which is going to house um, a start-up business called Elevate, who do business support for us, Business Gateway, uh, will uh, host council offices and services, and also give community facilities as well. A well-tried and tested model, but where we've got a choice about where to spend our money in regeneration terms, we've gone there. If I go to Banff, uh, further along the coast, we have done up the townhouse that's there, and the lovely building, put all of our staff into there. Um, we have, uh, with uh, support from other uh, agencies, we developed an old silversmiths in the town as well, and I've got a company, Veneta Inc., in there actually running a new silversmith as well, running courses for people actually producing commercial goods and services as well. Um, it's really practical stuff in terms of looking about where and how we spend our money. If I continue with the regenerate, well, actually, we'll go to the office theme. 
I think about a town like Ellen that we have in the middle of Aberdeenshire. Um, I burst out laughing after about half an hour of walking around the town with my team for the first time there a few years ago when I counted up to 13 separate offices that the council had within the town with different teams in them. Some of them in the prime retail area and we were stopping and inhibiting retailers from getting to that space because we had an office there. And from our logic it was great because that means people could access us but we were um, uh, using, and I'd say overusing, the space that other people should be using as well from a community point of view. Now what we wanted to do from, for me is to free up a lot of that leased office accommodation, let, make it available to other people, and reduce my costs, but what we're also doing is committed to build a, a new build on the site of an old academy. We've knocked down the old academy, we've built a new one, thank you very much Scottish Government for the money, we'd like some more for our next one as well in Peter Head. Um, and we are starting to then build new offices that will be on that old site as well. And that's going to be jointly done with health um, uh, and have community facilities in there as well. So a real practical thought there is about how do we stay in the town centre, reduce our costs, free up the space that's available for people and bluntly also get our staff and our team sitting and working in the same area as well which is going to have greater benefits also. So a real practical stuff but we have a lot of choice in terms of whether to stay where we are, whether to invest in new offices, which doesn't always get you a prize at the moment, we'll end up on the front page of the newspaper, council invest in swanky new offices and all that sort of stuff, but it's the right thing to do in terms of the town centre. We've had a big debate in offices about whether we move out from Aberdeen, where we are, conversely, um, we're in the old regional council headquarters, and I'm not in Aberdeen, trying to place I, I serve, sit in somebody else's patch in that way, um, but we decided to stay there, but also invest in other offices including in Inverurie, and that will be investing in the old town hall, building new offices behind there, slap bang in the middle of the town centre. And incrementally, we nearly got the measuring rule out with our councillors, so they wanted to know whether that, whether that site was going to be better than 100 metres further away, and working out semantics of how many staff are going to be bothered to walk into town to buy a sandwich at lunch or do their shopping there, all that sort of stuff in terms of footfall. So big decisions about where we're basing our main headquarters come into that town centre first principle in that respect. That actually, I'd say, has been the main driver uh, alongside the basic commercials in terms of where we end up going, is that principle. Um, I guess maybe to finish off uh, a couple of things. Uh, the reason why this is so important to us is we do have that diversity of different communities across the Shire. But it's not a one-size-fits-all approach in any shape or form. And if I go between Braemar and Peterhead, they are completely different places. It is like Venus and Mars stuff in overall terms in a really good way. The communities sit alongside each other very comfortably, very happily. There isn't necessarily a competition too much all the time. People are content with their lot in that respect. We therefore quite happily deliver and diversify what we do to each different community in a very proper way. Different people have different needs, different ambitions, different aspirations. From a staff point of view, we're trying to encourage people to be able to work closer to where they stay, so there's less unproductive time. I want people to go and do lots of work and not sit in a car, being quite mercenary about it. If that means they've got a greater affinity with the place they stay, and they're part of that community, and we're part of the fabulous place, and we've got some investments in there, in terms of our hearts, not just in terms of our money, that's really great, that's important. So I want to build up local affinity with local teams of people working with the community to say what we're trying to do here and how do we do it in that respect as well. I, I make no um, apologies, we're still a pretty traditional council, quite clunky sometimes. Um, uh, representative democracy rules over participative democracy, I'd say. Uh, the idea of PB is a sort of a councillors look at me as though I've just sworn if I say things like that. You know, they're very important in terms of that they're the representatives, they've been voted in. They've delivered so many leaflets, they want to get some payback for that in terms of actually making decisions on things. Um, uh, so some of the things I'm talking about are not as progressive as other areas of the country, I'm clear about that, but it's quite progressive where we are as an authority in terms of using something quite simple and elegant to saying whatever we think about or do it aside, we'll think about town centres all the time and that's across in every single service as well. Social work, property, planning, uh, roads, transport, the whole lot will all have an impact in some shape or form and it's about pricking people's consciousness about how we do it. Um, I guess the final bit for me to say is as we're on that journey of doing this in that very simple but hopefully elegant way, um, we do want to keep ourselves grounded about that humility, it's not about us all the time, um, and also think about the diversity that there is out there. And 
I just mentioned role of partnerships as an example. So two things. Uh, bids, we're a late adopter. And we've got two of those going. One's flourishing, the other one's having a bit of a scrap at the moment about how it's getting on its feet, I would say. Maybe the, a nice way to put it. Um, and we've got six rural partnerships out there we work with. And maybe just to illustrate some of our journey here whilst we're getting ourselves sorted out, we have sometimes have a, a, a fraught relationship with those partnerships because they represent the autonomy of communities. Um, and I was pretty, um, yeah, it was an interesting journey to think about how to respond to a lobby that was coming from a parent council demanding a new academy and they wanted it built next year. Uh, to then find out that actually that had been stimulated by a piece of facilitation work that the Royal Partnership had done about what the community's plans and aspirations were, which we had paid for. Um, so I was a little bit caught and struck about I'd actually paid for someone to come and lobby on my desk to say, can I have £40 million, please? And I found, like, how do you navigate that? But you've got to take that stuff on the chin. You've got to respond to communities' needs and expectations there. Um, alongside other rural partnerships in Huntley is a great example with that rock-solid focus in terms of uh, the town centre and maybe thinking about traditional way that we support them. Um, partnership's been going for about 10 years I think, uh, thereabouts, maybe a bit more. Um, it's bought a farm, it's got a wind turbine up, it's got an, uh, an income stream now, it's self-sustainable. They're sitting with a fair few quid in the bank now which is amazing for a partnership to have. We are comfortably therefore, I'd say, handing over the reins for them to lead on the conversation <coughs> across the community about how we develop our educational facilities and learning facilities in that town over the next 10 to 20 years. Um, and that's still us doing a town centre thing, but I think of us finding a way whereby it's not just about us all the time, there's other people doing it as well, doing over the times. I'll pause and stop there. Hopefully what you've got from me is um, a, a message of, of Aberdeen Sharp being pretty bonny, pretty buoyant, very diverse, uh, very different needs and interests in different places, and a council trying to find a way to actually uh, touch every single part of our thinking in a very local way, uh, being comfortable with diversity, being comfortable that we do things differently. I really wanted to get down to the grassroots of staff and councils to say, how are we going to do this stuff? And how we influence it from strategic level in terms of policy, but in a very simple and elegant way that just pervades everything in that respect as well. So you could all do it tomorrow. It's that easy in terms of introducing it. How you make it happen, I think, is the big challenge. Um, and what was really, I was thinking halfway through, I'm going to have to ask Jim about what are the challenges that you've faced in doing that, but I think you're quite clear about what some of those challenges are towards the end there, so that's really helpful. And it's helpful because, I guess, what I'm going to ask you to do now is think about, and that, that was about the town centre first principle, so you might want to think about that, but also think about there are lessons in that for how to implement another principle that we've been given, which is the place principle. Um, you might you think about how the two fit together possibly, but also I think there were just lessons from the experience there and your own experience of how to go about implementing this new collaborative place <coughs> principle and making it work. And there are lots of clues and hints, I guess, talking points from what Jim said. Um, has any, before getting you to have a chat, are there any questions for Jim? Things you might be uncertain about, you're not clear about. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The big geographic area was that it was rural. What do the rural people do when it's all about town centre first? Are they just in the um, I think okay in the grand scheme of things. I mean, the, the because we don't have any major sort of a cities in that respect, and that that, that hub of, of twelve towns, they they create a cluster in that respect as well. So each area works with it with this of their towns in in partnership. Um, and I think there is a just the reality where people use those as that hub and spoke model in overall terms, really. So it's not an either or. Again, um, uh, we'll go, go into an example um, of, I say, sort of Ballot and Bray Mark communities. They get on with stuff. You know, we, we're there. We're putting a lot of time and effort in there as well. It doesn't detract from what we're doing in addition to that in that respect as well. Clearly, but that's maybe the diversity. We, it's not a. We haven't got a formula to say this is what each community gets in that respect. It just depends on their starting point and the expectation. Um, but most people are pretty comfortable in terms of their space and their place and what they want and need. Um, so I think they prefer the fact that they're seeing investment, for example, in a, um, a West Hill and a, um, a Stonehaven and a Bankery and a Huntley. They don't feel they've got to go trading into Aberdeen all the time to go and get something. So in relative terms, it works okay. 
Because we're all in a plan or so we're doing things for first and that's yeah. effective. Um, what those main authorities are relegated up to inform partners of decision making. So why did you do that? And, and how is it done? Is it against a set criteria? Is it more a a, 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 a looser assessment? Um, so, so a bit of why and how. I guess he was thinking that we do a lot of things that um, outwards of planning activity that have an impact in terms of our communities and our towns in that respect. So if you think about um, us as an employer, but 14,500 staff, 550 million pound budget, 100 million pound capital each year, that goes out and that can have a huge impact or not in terms of those towns in that respect as well. So it's making a more positive and conscious choice about the fabric of those things there in terms of uh, as an employer, as an asset owner and as a commissioner than you would do otherwise in that respect as well. Because otherwise through planning I'm determining what every, every, everyone else does, not what a council does in that respect as well. And in terms of the method underneath it, um, it would be very simplistic. The first prompt is about what's the impact on the town centre, you know, it's like fill in the box and get thinking about it. And actually that's quite important to say, we're not gonna do it so it's a tick box thing and that's it. You, we've got training modules in there, we've got some sets of performance data about our 12 towns in terms of health indicators. And it's, so it's telling people, get in touch with your area and your town, think about what this would do to that or not. So it doesn't become too formulaic in that respect as well. So that's the, the method really. A little bit of method, but it is a bit of a get your head around it. It's the main thing. Yourself. Hi, um, very interesting. Thanks very much. Um, I, I was particularly touched to like your comment about uh, how <coughs> where people work closer to where they live, yeah. you know, and are where they stay. Yeah. Word, uh, um, they'll, they're more likely to have an affinity, a local yeah. affinity. And uh, your point as well about, you know, instead of people sitting in cars, yeah. they're more productive. Uh, I've got a vested interest. I'd say walking and cycling would have incrementally increased, but just by virtue of the fabric of the place, I think that's still probably a, a hard grab. We go, we go very rural very quickly in, in that respect. So, uh, without being too naive about it, sort of the, the, the concept of pavements and, and street lighting sort of is, is sparse sometimes in terms of encouraging people to actually sort of, sort of walk in that way as well. We're still very car dependent. Public transport's not have in Aberdeenshire. Um, uh, we've got mediocre sort of bus and, uh, and train services all in all in that respect as well. It's built around cars, I think is the reality of a large rural area in that respect as well. Um, but what I do see is people have got greater flexibility. So moving on from a, uh, a traditional construct of like this service goes to this office, you know, we're trying to say there's offices available in these places, go work where you need to. You know, make sure you stay in touch with your team, don't be a stranger, um, get your job done. And so saying that there is a, we need a certain volume of, of desks across the whole of the Shire and just making people do that. I've seen actively people um, respond to that very well, which is um, being far more agile in terms of where they work, more flexible, going to where they need to be, not where they think they ought to be, um, use of the technology in Skype far more, and that's just accelerated over the past couple of years. That's a cultural thing to say to people, I don't care where you are, just get the job done. <coughs> And it's, not be, it's also not being a very f a hard intervention to say you are now going to be in this area. It's a bit more loose than that, saying if you, if you can li uh, work the way you stay, get on with it. And that just, I think, creates a bit more affinity in terms of their community and that ownership and responsibility. It's back to how it used to be. One of our towns stricken, uh, villages, sorry, you know, it's got probably about six or eight shops now. It used to have 96 in that respect. So, you know, you're getting back into, and the only school that kept open when we had really bad snow and ice last winter was Braemar, because the, the uh, school teachers actually live in the village, all the others travelled from elsewhere, so they couldn't get there. So we're trying to get back into some of that, like maybe Victorian or pre-Victorian type of actually just be where you are and have a bit more uh, time with your community uh, and uh, to make that possible for those who want to do it. But I think the walking cycling is still a tough gig for us, to be honest about it. The last question before we split up. Yes. Okay. Um, thank you for that. Um, I just wanted to ask if everyone's co concentrating on the impact of the town centre. Yeah. What are they ignoring? 
that's important and what are, are there any unintended consequences and then how do you pick up on, on those? Um, it's, st it's still early-ish I'd say in terms of any big unintended consequences. The one I would uh, think for me is where someone comes screaming into the office and say we've got to do this because of the town centre first principle and I'd say what about the rest of the business case that's going to cost us two million pounds more than that so it's about people getting used to still having to find the balance all in all as well so it's not a we will therefore do everything just for this principle it's a it's a um, a larger consideration than it may have been before but it's not the sole consideration in that respect as well so it's still we still have to have decisions which stack up from a financial and or service uh, and a community point of view in a different ways as well so I think that is it people just getting used to sometimes I should be too worried about it being a bit keen about it and saying we're going to go this way and saying no no we're going to go that way a little bit instead so that's the main uh, unintended consequence, but that's a positive one, I'd say, of actually people just getting a feel in terms of actually how to find the right balance. Um, but as I said, you've still got a range of different issues that you need to try to actually balance in all the decisions we make as well.